yes it's a lining it's a lining epi lining boundary of a particular organ is called a epithelium it could be inner lining it could be outer one like in skin it is outer in uh, vessels it is inner so what is gland it's basically a folded epithelium so group of cells that secrete substances so these substances can be from the endocrine gland or the exocrine gland so derive derivation of these glands it takes place with the help of epithelium so folding of epithelium makes it a gland so how an endocrine gland develops and how an exocrine gland gland develop endocrine and exocrine you all know endocrine are ductless glands so in endo exocrine the duct part is preserved while in endocrine the duct part it gets absorbed so here we can see an epithelium where the proliferation of the cells takes place this proliferation of the cells take a shape and it is attached to the surface epithelium so it is attached to the surface epithelium this portion will form the duct part of the gland and rest of the part proliferation of the epithelium will form the secretory part of the gland so the duct is preserved here so it is an formation of exocrine gland while in endocrine gland it loses its connection with the surface epithelium so the duct it gets disappeared and these cells they are innervated by the capillaries the by which they get nutrition and these becomes the endocrine glands so where does the secretion of endocrine gland goes these are ductless so it is poured into the blood now based on different things yes ma'am only ka nahi kuch aur baat thi mujhe lag raha tha so based on number of cells it is unicellular and multicellular so in all in the whole human body jao dono bhar jao so based on number of cells it is unicellular and multicellular so in whole body you have multicellular type of glands only one single unicellular gland is goblet cells that secrete the mucus so one gland that you have to remember is unicellular is goblet cells a single cell is going to produce the mucus while rest of the glands in the body whether it is sweat gland sebaceous gland these all are multicellular glands based on the presence of duct exocrine and endocrine so exocrine they are with duct endocrine they are ductless now based on the manner of secretion if the epithelium uh, or the collect collection of these epithelium cells it is producing some secretion how this secretion is poured out into the ducts it is divided into mirocrine epocrine and the holocrine holocrine means complete disintegration of a cell so complete disintegration of a cell occurs and the release of the secretion takes place while in epocrine epo apical part only the apical part disintegrates and there is a relief of release of the enzymes mirocline gland how does the secretion takes place with the help of exocytosis so these are the three type of classification that you have to remember how these glands have been divided according to the number of cells presence of ducts and the how the secretion takes place so number of cells is unicellular multicellular presence of duct is exocrine endocrine and through the secretion it is mirocrine epocrine and the holocrine now what are the different parts of an exocrine gland as in development we have seen the epithelium infolds or proliferates and then it takes the shape with this proliferation the lower part becomes the secretory unit and the part that is attached to the epithelium surface epithelium becomes the duct so this is the duct part and this is the glandular epithelium so this glandular epithelium collection of these cells make it a secretory unit so any exocrine gland will be composed of a secretory unit and a duct so we should know about these secretory units there are different types of secretory units and there are different types of ducts present in any gland can you name any gland 
salivary gland so we'll be discussing in detail all the salivary gland now how on this uh, formation of the secretory unit and the duct how these glands they have been classified so depending on the duct branching so only this part depending on the branching of the ducts it is divided into simple and compound so simple is the one which is unbranched while the compound which is formed by the joining of multiple branches so there is a term simple simple duct simple gland and a compound gland now depending upon the secretory unit the epithelium glandular epithelium that folds to form the secretory unit has been classified into tubular glands so according to the shape it has been classified so tubular that means tube shaped now this tubular can be simple tubular it can be coiled it can be branched so these are simple tubular glands no branching is there these are tube shaped while in the simple branched tubular the these secretory units these are branched and these are simple coiled tubular the tubular unit it coils onto itself so this is simple coil tubular so all these are the classification of the tubular you have tubular gland you have branch tubular gland and a coil tubular gland then you have acinar or alveolar ducts uh, alveolar glands so in these secretory units the uh, secretory part it is the rounded the glandular epithelium is in rounded shape so one is acinar and when these acinar units they become bigger in size they are called as alveolar units so this is simple acinar unit and this is branched acinar unit so you have a difference in the shapes of two tubular is elongated while the acinar is round in shape now when we say it is a simple tubular glands so simple means simple we have dis discussed it is having a single duct no branching and tubular we have discussed the secretory unit is tubular in shape so the secretory unit here we can see this sec uh, secretory unit is tubular in shape and this duct is only single so it is named as simple tubular gland so this glands when you will see in the histological slides the folding of epithelium will be seen like this so this folded epithelium the lower part that is embedded in the connective tissue this is the secretory unit which is which is looking tubular in shape and this part which is connecting to the surface epithelium this is the duct part so there is no branching so we call it simple tubular glands so in the git mostly we find these simple tubular glands then you have simple coiled tubular the tubular portion it gets coiled up so this tubular portion secretory unit is coiled and this duct part when we are calling it simple it is single duct so it is simple coil tubular glands so if anybody ask you you can uh, say that simple means unbranched while the term coil tubular is giving the name to the secretory unit of this gland so where do we find these types of gland we find it in the sweat glands so when we take the section of the sweat gland we find circles so it is in the sections we see the uh, uh, circles of these coil tube when the section is been taken then we see the slide we can find these circle these all are the part of the coil tubular gland we are not going to see this type of structure in the histology we will see a gland uh, sorry the duct unit and the secretory unit and the secretory unit will be in the form of different sex circle sections though it is shaped like coiled one so you have a duct and these secretory units so these all are the coiled part of the sweat glands so when you see the sweat gland don't come and say that we are not able to see the coil section of the tube so you are not going to see the coil section of the tube you are just going to see the units secretory units in the form of a small circles now simple branch tubular what is simple branch tubular gland branch tubular means the tubular secretory unit is tubular and it is branched and they are joining to a single duct so we have different tubular branch secretory units and all are going to join in the single duct so this is simple branch tubular gland 
so where do we find these glands these are found in the esophagus they are found in the duodenum they are found in the tongue so at various places related to the git we can find these simple branch tubular glands so in the git we find simple tubular glands we find simple branch tubular glands now the simple snr and simple branch snr so similar to the tubulars we will change the shape of the secretory unit it becomes the round in shape so this secretory portion is round in shape and the ducted single then you have secretory units which are branched and they are in the form of a circle so these branches are joining in one single duct so example for this is sebaceous gland so where do we find sebaceous gland they are related to the hair follicles so if we see the histological picture these this is a hair follicle and these are the units of the sebaceous gland so here we can see the snr shape of the sebaceous gland the duct uh, the glandular part of the sebaceous gland and these are joining at a one single duct so one single opening with multiple snr units now what is compound snr gland the simple so we have understood now compound compound means multiple branches they are going to join a one single main branch so can we see the multiple branches of the duct here yes so these are multiple branches of the duct which are coming from the different secretory units and they are joining to form a one single duct that is going to open on the surface epithelium so this is compound alveolar gland then compound tubular gland so in the duodenum submucosa we find the bruner's gland which are a type of compound tubular glands so compound tubular gland you will tell me what are compound tubular glands compound means multiple branches opening into the single duct and tubular means the glandular epithelium or the secretory unit is in tubular shape so these are the different tubular units and this is also the portion of the glandular or the secretory units that are found in the form of a small circles so when we take a histological section it is not like that is going to be a longitudinal section all the glands they are situated in the longitudinal fashion they can be when we take the section they become in, uh, they are actually aligned in the different directions so we find some portions in the circular form and some in the longitudinal form then compound tubulo alveolar glands like in salivary gland we find compound tubulo alveolar gland so compound means multiple branches tubulo alveolar means tubulo alveolar or tubulo assigner what does that mean the secretory unit is either they are in rounded units like snr or tube shape so both kind of these glandular epithelium the secretory units are present so this is the uh, summary of this exocrine glands so exocrine glands can be simple they can be compound so under the simple glands based on the nature of secretions so they could be serous glands they could be mucous glands so what is serous and what is mucous this is a type of secretion that comes from a gland so serous is a protein rich fluid that is coming from the glands what do we get from from the glands is the secretions so we classify them depending on the what type of secretion these glands are giving so they can give a serous secretion they can give mucous secretion so serous glands they are protein protein rich watery secretions is present and the glands they have serous snr till now we have just discussed the shape of the glandular epithelium it could be tubular it could be snr now these snr units they can be either serous type or can be mucous type so we have to identify what type of sni they are present in a particular gland like in submandibular parotid or sublingual what type of sni are there so now these folded epithelium which is forming an sni the cells here do they look like pyramidal in shape yes so these are pyramidal in shape with a very less lumen here 
so this all the lumen has been occupied by the apex of these pyramidal cells how you will identify the serous sni because you have to differentiate the serous sni from the mucous sni so in this serous sni you can see this color violet color and on to the apex you see the pink color so this is achenine staining hematoxylin eosin staining where the base is taking the hematoxylin stain and the apex is taking the eosin stain so why it is been there because the the base the hematoxylin dye it uh, uh, colors the all protein rich material that is present here so it takes uh, it gives the basal basophilia and on the apex it becomes eosinophilic so when you see the serous sni they will be dark in color pinkish in color while the mucous sni they are very light colored so this mucous sni in the mucous glands so here we see these pyramidal glands they are placed in the sinr units and we can see some lumen also while in this serous sni we cannot see the lumen properly while in the mucus we can see the lumen so it has a wider lumen compared to the serous units so how do we identify these sinr units they are flat elongated with a basal cell the cell is placed basally and whole the pyramidal cell is looking white why does they look white because they are carrying the mucinogen granules so uh, when we do the slide preparation while doing the hematoxylin eosin slide staining this mucin mucinogen granules they get washed out so the empty space is left behind so these are white in color so it is very easily identifiable sni mucus sni so you can easily differentiate between serous and the mucus sni based on the color differentiation if you are seeing pinkish purplish type of sni they are serous if they are white in color like adipose tissue so it is mucus sni then you have mixed glands so based on the secretion we have serous we have mucus and we have a mixed gland mixed gland is has serous as well as mucus secretion in the mixed gland sometimes we find the mucus sni which are having the serous demilunes so mucus sni which are topped with the serous part of the cells they are called as the serous demilunes that are present on the top of the mucus sni so in mixed gland we will find the serous sni mucus sni and the mucus sni with the serous demilunes are also present so these are the three different type of sni that are present on in the serous glands mucus gland and the mixed gland so in the mixed gland you will find this sni this sni as well as this sni so all the all these sni will be present so if i say this gland is uh, completely serous can we say an uh, any gland to be a completely serous or completely mucus like sublingual is a mucus gland so when i say it is a mucus gland it means it is predominated by the sni which are mucus in nature at some part you will find the serous sni also it's not like only mucus will be present like here in the submandibular gland what we can see we can see serous demilunes so this is a mucus sni and this is topped with the serous cells so these are called as a mucus sni and this is called as a serous demilunes this hole is a mucus sni and this is again having the serous demilunes this is completely pinkish in color this is serous sni and this is lesser stain compared to the serous sni so it is a mucus sni even you can see it is more white stain here so it is still having some pinkish stain but when we see the slide it is completely washed out bulana sir so the difference between the serous and the mucus glands will be asked to you or the serous sni and the mucus sni so if we see the shape of the pyramidal cells they both are having the pyramidal cells so we cannot differentiate basis of the shape of the cells we can differentiate on the size of the cells 
the acini serous acini they are smaller in shape while the mucous acini they are larger in shape the lumen we have all seen the lumen in the serous acini is having the less lumen compared to the mucous acini so serous is having less lumen while the mucous is having the wider lumen what are other differentiating points staining when we do acne staining the basal basophilia and the apical eosophilia is seen in the serous type of acini while in the mucous cells we have washed out mucinogen granules so it is white in shape white in color kya ho gaya restart so it is more whitish in color and where do we find the serous acini in submandibular gland we have serous acini and in sublingual we have mucous acini so parotid is also one of the serous gland now the goblet cells so goblet cells is a one unicellular gland that is present in the whole human body so where do we find these goblet cells and what is the type of the epithelium that has been transformed to become the glandular epithelium so here it is simple columnar epithelium it is present either singly or it is present mixed with the other type of glands like in git it is mixed with the simple tubular glands there are multiple mucus cells are present which are goblet cells now what is the shape of these goblet cells so this is a glandular epithelium in the git and here this white area this is a goblet cell what is the shape of this structure it is apical cup shaped and base is narrow so it is kind of inverted cell so apex is towards the inner side and upper side towards the surface it is broad shaped so during acne staining that we have discussed the mucinogen granule they get washed out that's why they appear whitish in color so what are the stains that are going uh, going to give it a color because acne staining it will be washed out the special stain for it is periodic acid schiff stain which gives it magenta color because the mucin present in the mucinogen granules they take up the color and another one is mucic carmine staining that gives it deep red color to the goblet cells so what is the purpose of the goblet cells goblet cells they are secreting the mucus so lubrication and giving the mucus to the git is the function of these goblet cells where is these uh, goblet cells are present other than git in conjunctiva also these are present so this is a portion from the git where we can see white areas so these white areas these are actually the goblet cells and what is this gland can you see the infolding of this epithelium this is the infolding of the epithelium so this infolding of the epithelium is forming the gland so can you identify which type of gland it is simple tubular thank you very much salivary glands no it's good if you have identified this slide because in histology we will show you the slides and if you can identify the simple tubular and compound it is really good so now coming to the salivary glands the purpose of salivary glands it is secreting the saliva what does the saliva contains water mucus amino acids so okay so what do you think what would be the picture of a salivary gland in histology okay let's see the gross picture first if you take out any gland it would be covered with some connective fascia some connective tissue would be there that connective tissue is going deep into that gland parenchyma and dividing it into the different lobes so each lobe when you see the histology it's not like a whole of the gland you are seeing you are just seeing the this much size of a gland on histology so that size of a gland what does it can show you it can show you the glandular epithelium 
it can show you the duct system it can show you the connective tissue present there and it can show you the different lobes of that tissue uh, that is the parenchyma of the gland so if we see in gross so connective tissue is dividing the gland into different lobes then different lobes are again divided into the different lobules and each or whole of this gland is containing the acini so does only the acini is present in the gland no other than glands what we will see in the glandular histology other than acini what we will see nahi wo to acini hi hoga na acini ke alawa kya dekhenge hum usme jab hum histology identify kar rahe hain we will see the connective tissue we will see the blood vessels we will see the acini uske alawa एसिनाई देख लिया तो एसिनाई का सिक्रीशन भी जाएगा ना तो डक पार्ट भी तो आएगा सो हर पार्ट में डक होगी तो डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ डक वुड बी देयर अगर इंट्रा लोबुलर डक है दैट वुड बी सीन डिफरेंटली कंपेयर टू द इंटर लोबुलर डक सो डिफरेंट डक्स आर प्रेजेंट देयर सो सी सी अ पिक्चर ऑफ अ मिक्स लैंड वॉट वुड बी प्रेजेंट देयर so here they have just uh, given you the line diagram to see different acini different duct system that would be present in any glandular histology so this is a type of acini these are all type of acini so ye wala acini kaun sa type ka hai tubular or acinar acinar this one tubular what are these serous cells present on the top of the though it are though in the line diagram it is not easily identifiable to say it a serous demilune so these are serous demilune any acini topped with the different cells it is serous demilunes then you have myoepithelial cells on this acini what does the myoepithelial cells do contraction so they are filled with the actin so they do the contraction of the glandular epithelium now the ducts these are the ducts branch ducts that are coming into a striated duct so myoepithelial cells they are the myoepithelium or the basket cells the shape of these cells when you see the microanatomy of these cells it will be basket in shape they are star shaped cells which are present between the epithelium and the basal lamina what is basal lamina the portion of the basement membrane it is it is having the actin filaments so if it is having the actin filaments they will do the contraction now there are different types of ducts in the salivary gland Okay, till now we have discussed the secretory unit now we'll be discussing about the ducts so these ducts they are lobar they are interlobular they are intralobular so i guess you understand the meaning of inter intra and lobular part so what is interlobular present between the two different lobes intralobular confined to the single lobe and in intralobular there are two types of ducts that is striated and intercalated now the epithelium of this duct keeps on changing so intercalated duct which is present inside a single lobule it is lined by the low cuboidal epithelium while the striated ducts they are lined by the sim uh, simple columnar so you have low columnar to the simple low cuboidal to the simple columnar type of epithelium in the intralobular duct system so intercalated ducts they are the ducts which are connecting the secretory units acini with the larger ducts so you have seen uh, you have already seen the secretory units which are joining into the multiple branches and that multiple branches they are going to join in a single duct so that multiple branches of the secretory unit they are called as the intercalated ducts so first epithelium after the secretory unit is the low cuboidal epithelium 
and as you go into the single duct in the intralobular part you have a striated duct which is joined by which is aligned by the simple columnar epithelium now the other salivary ducts uh, you have inter we have discussed the intralobular you have interlobular and the loba, lo, lobular ducts or the main secretory duct so these epithelium you have main ducts they are becoming the main ducts of the gland so they have striated epithelium so anywhere in the human body you will find the striated epithelium is one important example is the duct system that is interlobular duct or the main excretory duct of the salivary gland it is striated and this striated can be cuboidal or the columnar if we say it is striated columnar what does the two different layers that would be present or how we identify any striated epithelium how do we identify the stratified better say stratified epithelium multiple layer and how do we name it on the basis of the superficial epithelium present there so it is stratified epithelium not the striated so simple columnar to stratified cuboidal or columnar so the topmost layer can be cuboidal or the columnar in the main excretory duct of the gland so you have understood the lobular ducts interlobular ducts and the intralobular ducts so intralobular mein kya aayega intercalated and striated interlobular mein inter mein kya aayega main excretory ducts what would be the epithelium now coming to the main glandular histology that is the parotid gland submandibular gland and the sublingual gland parotid gland where do we find the parotid gland near the upper jaw so it is placed near the external acoustic meatus near the ear pinna and the lateral area of the face so this parotid gland it is covered with a capsule so we will find a encapsulated gland which is divided into different lobes and lobules by the help of this thick connective tissue that is present over the gland the main duct that helps it to open into the oral cavity is called as the stenson's duct so main secretory unit or the excretory duct is the stenson's duct where does it open into the vestibule of the mouth opposite the second molar tooth what are the different type of sni and the duct system by which we will identify it in histology the sni they are serous type so predominantly it is a serous gland and the duct is ducts they are inter interlobular and the intralobular ducts are present in all the duct all the different glands these ducts are present epithelium of these ducts we have discussed intercalated ducts they are low cuboidal striated ducts they are simple columnar and other ducts that is main excretory ducts they are stratified cuboidal to stratified columnar or squamous so basically cuboidal or columnar is the epithelium not the squamous here so this is a picture of the parotid gland so what we are going to identify we said it, it has serous sni so can we identify different serous sni so this is a picture of one serous sni so can we find multiple serous sni in the gland yes so it is serous sni and somewhere there are light color cells are also present these are mucous sni what is this this is a connective tissue of the gland which is divided into the different lobes now what is this this is a duct this is a duct so one duct which is present in between the two it is interlobular duct and the duct which is present inside a single lobe it is intralobular duct though the epithelium of interlobular duct should be striated that has not been shown here but the here we can see the epithelium which is cuboidal to columnar in shape a more of cuboidal in shape has been shown this one is the intercalated duct so outside this picture we can see serous sni intercalated duct striated duct 
and the interlobular duct so what is the difference with, between all these serous acini you all can identify this is serous acini then intercalated duct and the striated duct what is the difference intercalated duct it is having the simple cuboidal epithelium while in striated you can see basal foldings of the basement membrane so here we can see the different foldings that make it little bit darker in color so this is striated duct then you have interlobular duct that has multiple layers of the cells so we can see here the two different layers of the cells are should be there but only one point we can see at two different cells are present at the different level so it is a stratified epithelium so these three types of ducts we have to identify we have to identify the connective tissue in the gland and we have to identify the acini in the gland so as to label it as a parotid gland other than these tissue what can we find we can find the blood capillaries here we can find adipose tissue here so in a single slide other than the identifying feature you can find different connective tissues also and the vascular supply and the lymphatics in the different regions but we have to focus for the identifying features so for parotid gland or any gland you will identify the acini and the duct system so this is the histological picture of the parotid gland so when you see the slide it will looks like this one so all the darker colored acini they are serous ones so we have multiple serous acini here and we can see a single duct over here what type of duct it is interlobar duct this one is the striated duct can you differentiate between the striated duct and the intercalated duct hmm who will show me the difference between the intercalated duct and the striated duct is there any difference lighter in color which one is lighter size yes size is the one thing that is striated duct is bigger in size compared to the intercalated both are intralobular duct the basal area here it is having striations i don't know if you can see in the lcds on the screen can you see the basal striations no it is having the basal striations this is striated duct so it has a basal striations and this one is not having any basal striations and it is smaller in size then you have interlobular duct so is this connective tissue area can you see the different layer of the cells is it a single layer of the cell or multiple layer of the cell multiple so we have defined it as a stratified layer so stratified with two layers it is simple columnar epithelium present in the interlobar duct coming to the submandibular gland submandibular is a mixed type of gland so what we will see here now you all can tell what we can see here okay first thing is acini what we will find in the acini serous as well as mucus acini and mucus acini with the serous demilunes so let's identify it if it is present there or not so we have serous acini you have mucus acini with the serous demilunes and other than that uh, that we have same duct system so these are the serous acini easily identifiable this is mucus acini which is top with the serous demilunes then you have duct system again striated duct interlo intralobular duct interlobular duct so this is a photo mic micrograph of the submandibular gland where you can see majority we can see the mucus acini here these are the serous acini now these mucus acini they are having the epithelium topped over it which is a glandular in nature this is serous demilunes over the mucus acini so this is how we identify the 
सब मैंडिबुलर ग्लैंड एंड हेयर वी कैन सी द ग्लैंड डार्क पिक्चर ऑफ द इंटरल्यूबुलर डार्क हेयर वी कैन इजीली से दिस इज हैविंग द मल्टीपल सेल्स सो वी कैन सी अ बिगर डार्क कंपेयर टू द अदर डार्क इंटरकैलेटेड एंड द स्ट्राइटेड इट इज अ बिगर वन बिकॉज इट इज इंटरल्यूबुलर एंड इट इज हैविंग द स्ट्रेटिफिकेशन now the sublingual sublingual is predominantly the mucus gland so this mucus gland is not encapsulated so one thing is capsule is absent so it is not covered with a well defined capsule the secretory unit they are tubular not completely acinar duct system we don't have a intercalated duct here so this is the picture of the mucus acini interlobular duct present in the interlobular connective tissue so this is the photo micrograph or the histological picture where we can see the mucus acini multiple mucus acini it is completely filled with the mucus acini mostly so this is the summary of the salivary glands what type of glands are there what is the different architecture of the different glands so any problem in this summary if you have taken the photos you can read it once Okay, anyone who will read it? What do you mean by this? What you have read? Sera sesinae. They have pyramidal cells, basal basophilia, apical esophilia, round basal nucleus. Do you understand what it is? Next. Sit down. Next one. can you explain me these terms what you have read next next what is written there it's not visible not visible come in front and read it get your specs changed if you cannot read hmm apical esophilia apical esophilia uh, you see the uh, eosin stain will be stained at apical mm. what does basal and the apical esophilia means basal color batao stain ka purple color and on the ap apex side pinkish in color that is the eosin color okay next one mixed acini mucus acini with serous demilunes ducts so different types of ducts has been divided you have to remember this duct system as they will ask you what are the different types of ducts that are present inside one single lobe and which is the excretory unit is having what kind of duct system okay that is all in the gland histology